guys, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of Phoenix Ray Ace Attorney. In the last episode, we um, started cross-examining Emma uh, right after, like, some kind of crazy st Not really crazy, but just kind of weird stuff was revealed about, like, you know, maybe stuff going on behind the scenes. Gant hasn't confessed to anything yet, but yeah, now we're cross-examining Emma. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure what I'm saying. Let's just keep going. All right. Did you draw this picture right after the incident? Um, I think I drew it two or three days later. At first I was in such a state of shock that I couldn't do anything. During that time, the detective team was reorganized. Detective Goodman was placed in charge under the, under the direction of Damon Gant and Lana Skye. Two or three days later, the memory should still have been fresh in her mind. Excuse me, witness. But can you please tell us why this picture is painted in all black? So at the time, you didn't even know it was Mr. Marshall who had come to your rescue? No, I couldn't see him clearly. The lightning was so bright, and I was knocked to the floor. You were knocked to the floor? Dark had a tight grip on me, but when Mr. Marshall jumped on him, I was knocked away. I turned around. And that's when the lightning flashed. Poor Emma. I'm just glad she wasn't hurt. What happened after the lightning flashed? You mean you didn't see the actual murder took place? No. I'm sorry. The flash of lightning only drove off the darkness for a split second. Not only that, but the trauma of the situation understandably caused the witness to faint. Do you really need to torture this girl any further? What? Hey, I'm not the bad guy here. Anyway, this picture. Sorry for asking so many times, but are you sure you drew exactly what you saw? Of course, this is the exact scene. It wasn't influenced in any way from your talks with the detectives? Are you insinuating we somehow manipulated her memory, Mr. Wright? No, no, of course not. I better watch out or he might find some way to cut my salary. I drew this picture before I heard anything from the detectives. So I don't think anyone's story would have influenced me. Mr. Wright, is there something that's bothering you about this picture? Huh? Oh, well... That's strange. She clearly- she claims this is exactly the scene that was imprinted in her mind, and yet, there's clearly a contradiction here. Ah. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but this picture the witness drew contains a blatant contradiction. What? B but I remember it just like it was yesterday. Mr. Wright, perhaps it would be faster if you simply pointed out this contradiction for us. What part of this picture contains the contradicts the autopsy report? It's this. Ah, ah, please. Okay. The contradiction, of course, lies here. Take a look at the knife the man is holding. If you look closely, you can see its tip is broken. In fact, you don't even have to look closely to see that. But Mr. Wright, look at the evidence. See the murder weapon? Its tip is broken too. If I recall, the tip of the knife was found broken off in the victim's body. It was the conclusive piece of evidence that proved Joe Dark was the murderer. I'm afraid it's not so simple, Emma. Huh? Where could you possibly see a problem? It's obvious, really. The victim suffered a single stab wound to the back. If the victim was only stabbed once, then the murder weapon should be- should not yet be broken! Whoa! What's the meaning of this? 
Perhaps the knife was broken beforehand. Sorry, but I'm afraid that's not possible. The tip of the knife was found inside the victim's body. If it was broken beforehand, it couldn't possibly wind up there. That's right, but what does this even mean? The tip of the knife was undeniably discovered within the victim's body. The only possible explanation is the witness's memory is mistaken. That's why I asked her so many times if she was sure she remembered correctly. I believe you were annoyed at that time. But she, should, but she was sure she remembered correctly. But there's no other way to explain this inconsistency. Not so fast, Mr. Redgeworth. There is another explanation. Have you forgotten already? About a little something called falsified evidence? You're treading on thin ice, right? All I'm saying is that this broken knife might be the piece of evidence that was forged. You can't deny the possibility. No. Ah! Oda, Oda, Oda! Are you saying the investigation really was corrupted? Your Honor, please allow me to once again go over the events that took place the day of the murder. The police department and the prosecutor's office were holding a ceremony that day. After receiving the King of Prosecutors Award at the ceremony, Neo Marshall questioned Joe Dark along with Damon Gant. During his questioning, Joe Dark fled the room. Prosecutor Marshall chased after him and was killed by Dark. It is my belief that somewhere in this story, there is a lie. Hmm. I... I'm not lying. The man really was holding up a broken knife. If that's true, then there's no other way around it. This could not have been the actual murder weapon. There must have been another broken knife. What are the chances of there being two broken knives? Another broken knife besides Joe Dark's? Could there have been one? Wait. Knife. Knife? Not. It is broken! If the witness is this adamant about the accuracy of what she saw, it can't just be explained away by a simple observational error. Mr. Wright! In that instant, Emma really did see a broken knife. I assume, then, that you have some information about this other broken knife. If so, please feel free to enlighten us. The murder weapon was already broken prior to the murder. There's only one way. Take a look at this. Here's the real murder weapon. The answer lies in the past. Two years in the past. Right here inside this picture. This is a picture of the awards ceremony. Ah! What is it, Mr. Edgeworth? It's the, the broken murder weapon. Notice the award Prosecutor Marshall is holding. That's... a broken knife! As we earlier concluded, the knife in the picture was not Joe Dark's knife. That being the case, the knife the witness saw was, all in, was in all likelihood this award. Oda, Oda, Oda! Neil Marshall was awarded the King of Prosecutors Award that day. As an award, he was given this broken shield and a broken knife. When he chased after Joe Dark, he pulled out this knife. Being a prosecutor, he did not carry a pistol. This broken knife was the only weapon he had in this dangerous situation. But that... that can't be. Oh? And why not, Mr. Edgeworth? Because if the King of Prosecutors Award knife was the murder weapon, then the murderer and the victim would be reversed. What do you mean? I mean... This man raising a knife would have been Prosecutor Neil Marshall. Oh. Oh! Well, we're stupid. <laughs> but the prosecutor was the one who actually died! That's true. What's going on here? It seems Mr. Wright has been a bit too eager to jump to conclusions. Emma? Wait! I, I remember now! I remember everything! Witness? Mr. Edgeworth! What is it? Could you show me your evidence list again, please? His list? 
The one with that picture scribbled on the back? I knew it. This picture... I'm the one who drew it. What? You drew that? That's right. The list wasn't torn in half at the time I drew this picture. All this time, I've been trying so hard to forget. I must have locked this part away deep inside me. Perhaps it would be best if we order this to the witness's testimony. Would you please tell us what you've recalled, Miss Skye? Yes, Your Honor. First the knife mix-up, and now the blue badger? This should be interesting. Huh. When I saw that man raise his knife, I panicked and rushed towards the both of them. I think I... I knocked away the man with the knife. Just then there was another flash of lightning, and that's when I saw... the blue badger. He wasn't in the room, but I'm sure I saw his shadow. I'm sure I saw his shadow? Is that, that's what I said. <laughs> this is certainly most unusual. Try impossible. The head detective of criminal affairs didn't even design him until this year. That would mean it didn't even exist two years ago. Yes, well, the defense may now begin its cross-examination. Stop, please, don't pursue this any further. Lana, what's the meaning of this? Please remain seated in the defendant's chair. But you can't do this. I've already confessed to the crime. Why can't you just leave it at that? Chief Prosecutor Sky. We've already come this far. It's too late to turn back. Silence! The defense will now begin its cross-examination. Bailiff, please detain the defendant. It seems we're finally getting to the core of the, of the matter. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Why would you do something so dangerous? What else could I have done? He was about to stab Mr. Marshall! She seems convinced that Dark was the one holding the knife. But as we've just theorized, Mr. Marshall was the one holding the knife. Well, I didn't know that at the time. When that Dark guy knocked me down, all I could think was, I've got to help Mr. Marshall! What do you mean, you think? It... it all happened so fast, and I was in shock. I don't remember everything clearly. What I did, it's all kind of a blur. In a matter of just a few seconds, Miss Skye was almost killed. Then she witnessed a murder about to take place. A little disorientation is only natural. I saw the man about to stab the other person, who I thought was my Mr. Marshall. I knew I had to stop the man with the knife. What you did was very brave, young girl. So then, what happened next? Are you sure about this? Of course, see? I even drew a picture of him here. But... The head detective of criminal affairs thought this up- thought up this hideous beast, and that was just this year. The blue badger didn't exist two years ago. This is all quite verifiable. I know it sounds strange. I was surprised too when I saw him at the police department. I had this hacking feeling that I'm seen him somewhere before. Now I finally remember! Oh, brother. Just when you thought that thing had caused enough commotion. Tell us, where in the room did you see him dancing? His shadow? So you mean you didn't actually see his face with its winning smile and all? That's right, but I still remember it. It had three creepy horns. This is pointless. That thing couldn't have possibly existed two years ago. The witness must be mistaken. That may well be. But what's important is what caused her to think she saw what she did. Oh, and I suppose you have an explanation? If so, then by all means, please tell us what the shadow really was. What was it Emma saw when that lightning flashed? Who is this blue badger, really? Wait a minute. 
What if I, what if I rotated it? I'm confused as hell. What? I swear it's this thing. That looks remotely like the blue badger. Let's let's try it. The blue badger hadn't even been dreamed up when Emma drew this picture. Yet she's certain she saw its shadow. Ladies and gentlemen, it is the defense's belief that on that fateful day two years ago, there indeed was something that looked similar to the blue badger. Something that is now sitting in this very room. Mr. Wright! In this room? Very well, Mr. Wright. What is it that the witness saw in that instant? Please show us this mysterious blue badger look-alike. The mysterious blue badger was, in fact, this. But that's... Uh, what exactly is that? I believe it's some sort of jar. But, Mr. Wright, that doesn't look anything like the blue badger. Indeed it doesn't. As it stands now, it's just a plain jar. However, what if we were to change our viewpoint? Our viewpoint? I've got to show them the correct angle to look at this from. Okay. Oh no. Oh no. Oh dear, no. Don't, don't rotate it that way. Keep it straight. Please keep it straight. There we go. Okay. And now, we're just gonna... Do, do a little, do a little, do a little something. Am I stupid? What's going on? Like, uh, like, 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 like that. Stop. <laughs> Please be straight. Oh my goodness. I mean, it does look very much like the blue badger, if I do say so myself. Let's go for it. Am I right? Well, is this a miracle or what? Let's go, I got it. No one can possibly deny this jar's resemblance to the blue badger. No, it can't be. Hold oh, hold oh, oh. The defense has proven its claim. The mysterious blue badger witnessed on the day of the crime was actually this. Although we all enjoyed Mr. Wright's dramatic performance, one question remains. What's your point? What do you mean? So that badger thing was actually just a jar. That doesn't change anything. I'm afraid that's where you're wrong, Mr. Edgeworth. You see... This changes everything. Indeed. Very well then. Please tell us. What's different now that we know the witness saw this jar? Now that's a very good question. Ah. Uh. Allow me to take these in turn. At the moment of the murder, the witness saw this jar. Not only that, but she saw it at a very specific angle. Knowing this, where could she have seen this jar? Where? The location of the jar is shown in a picture taken on the day of the crime. It's on a shelf in the office of Damon Gant. But the body was found lying near Lana Sky's desk. Desk. The witness testified so herself. Yes, and it is these two facts that reveal what actually transpired. You see... The struggle between Dark and Marshall did not take place in Lana Sky's office. It happened on the other side of the room, in Chief Gant's office. Are you implying the murderer moved the victim's body? From Damon Gant's office to Lana Sky's office? Yes. Why would he do that? There's no reason. 
Exactly. If there wasn't a reason, he wouldn't have gone through the trouble. The only logical conclusion is that there was a reason. Do you know what that reason was, Mr. Wright? I finally figured it out. So this is why Lana tried to stop the trial. It's too late to quit now, though. Please recall the witness's testimony. She said she knocked away the man who was holding up the knife. In the next instant, the jar was hit and flew and flew through the air. <laughs> flew through the air. Now tell me, what could have sent the jar flying? That would have to have been the impact the man made when he was knocked into the wall. And ladies and gentlemen, if I may draw your attention to this picture once more. If the man was knocked in the direction of the shelf the jar was sitting on, what would he have hit? <laughs> the suit of armor, holding a very sharp and dangerous looking sword. Yes. And since the man who was knocked into the armor was carrying a broken knife, he would have had to have been Neil Marshall, wielding the prosecutor's award. No. Mr. Wright, you can't be thinking. Yes. There was another possibility of what actually transpired in that room. Oh no, the possibility! Of course the perpetrator would have had no idea, but nevertheless... I... I don't know if I can go through with this. Mr. Royd, what's the matter? If events took place as the defense theorizes, then the outcome is obvious. In that moment, assuming the man Emma Sky knocked away was actually Prosecutor Neil Marshall, Y'all should see my face right now. Oh, God. You mean... Mr. Marshall died because of... me? No! Oh, oh, she's... oh, no. I never imagined her testimony would lead to this. So was the witness who took the victim's life. And then proves so with her own testimony. This is unprecedented! Oh no. What? What are you saying? I'm sorry, Miss Skye, but given the circumstances... Joe Darkmurder, Prosecutor Marshall! How can you think it was Emma? How dare you try to pin the crime on her? Imagine that coming from you. <sighs> if you recall, it was you who admitted to forging evidence two years ago. The reason you moved the pr prosecutor in Marshall's body was to keep anyone else from finding out about what Emma did, wasn't it? I assure you, Mr. Edgeworth, I have no idea what you're talking about. If you hope to have anyone believe your insane allegations, I'm afraid you're going to have to have proof. Tell me, do you have any conclusive evidence that proves my sister killed Neil Marshall? E evidence? I'm willing to bet you don't. Yes, it certainly would be difficult to prove this with evidence. If we don't have evidence, then we'll have to rely on testimony. I'm afraid that won't work in this case. Both parties involved in the incident are dead. We certainly can't get dead people to testify. This has all been a wild goose chase from the beginning. You know, unless we have, um, M M M Miss Maya here. But no, she's, she's off somewhere training, I guess. Touché, Miss Skye. Of course, that only leaves us with one possibility. You mean there's still another possibility? What do you mean, Mr. Edgeworth? I mean the possibility that the victim has left us a message. For better or for worse, Mr. Marshall did not die instantly. He may have left behind the name of the person who took his life. Somehow. That's... that's impossible. Well, Mr. Roy, this is the only possibility left to you. A message from the deceased. Does such a message exist? I've got to think back to the court record. The real murderer's name that the victim may have left behind? Um... Is... Oh no. Oh no. 
I'm, uh, I don't know. This message from the deceased is already in our possession. Mr. Wright, will you stop and nothing to prove my sister a murderer? Do not be mistaken, Miss Skye. <laughs> Our purpose is not to accuse Emma of any crime. There is only one thing we seek. The truth. No matter how painful it may be. Now then, Mr. Wright, please show us the piece of evidence that conveys a message from the deceased. I don't know, man. Shoo. It's from Detective Goodman's case, not... Hold on. There are lines. There, there are lines. It could be this. I'm gonna go for it. Okay. This is the message left by the deceased. This is that blue badger from before, right? Oh, is he going to just speak the killer's name? If that thing could, I'm sure it would. Looks like everyone's forgotten this just a jar. <laughs> a message was left here, on the surface of this jar. What do you mean? If you look closely, you can see a faint trail of blood on this jar. It looks like someone wiped the blood away. Yes, but notice. For some reason, the blood on some of the fragments was not wiped away. Yes, there is a line here, drawn in blood. So what you're saying is these dots were once lines. Prosecutor Marshall did not die instantly. He used the few freshest moments t left to him to leave behind a message. One that someone apparently wiped away, but blood must have seeped into the jar where the lines changed directions. Precisely so. All we need to do is connect these points, and the victim's message will become apparent. No. Also, she knows. Mr. Wright, what kind of message did the victim leave for us? Your Honor, I believe these bloodstains will reveal to us the answer. I've got to connect these dots to make letters. There's only one thing the victim would have written, given the circumstances. The murderer's name. This looks like an M. This looks like the... These two look like the, the lines of an E. So let's do this. Right here. Then this is the A. It's a defense attorney's duty to prove his client's innocence. That's why all I've been thinking about is saving Lana. After all my efforts, I never thought it would turn out like this. Emma. So this is the final message Prosecutor Marshall left behind. Of all people, she may not have meant it, but in the end, the one who took the victim's life was Emma Skye. Gant! Shut up. Shut up, you're not welcome here. Do you understand the implications of what you've done? What? What are you talking about? Two years ago, Joe Dark was sentenced to death. He was convicted because of his final murderer. I believe you were the prosecutor in, in the case, were you not? Uh, yes, Worthy. Because of you, an innocent man was sentenced to death. He was not innocent, he killed multiple people. This guy was a serial killer. Not only that, but you used forged evidence to ensure his conviction. <coughs> but Joe Dark really was a serial murderer. That's undeniable. 
I'm afraid that's not important. What the? F Didn't you know? We aren't just defenders. We aren't defenders of justice. What? We're merely keepers of the law. Sentencing a man to death is no light matter. Even if there wasn't a any cover-up or evidence forgery, ultimately the responsibility falls on the prosecutor in charge. Despite what anyone may say, this fact cannot be denied. Oh my fucking god. Oh no. <laughs> no, 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 no. This guy can please, can he please just shut his freaking face? Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no! The gavel's pounding fell on the deaf ears. Unable to set the settle the crowd, the judge declared a recess. Where this trial is headed, no one knows. Chief Gant, you suck! You literally suck! <laughs> I hate you, man! Oh my god. Ah. <laughs> Uh Man These trials These these trials in Rise from the Ashes, I swear to God. Mm. Uh whatever. <laughs> uh thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please make sure to leave a like, leave a comment, and maybe even subscribe. I don't know what's gonna go on after this. Well we'll find out next episode. I'll see you next time.